Today is June 6th, D-Day, and on this day in 1944, Allied forces invaded Normandy in one of the most massive, complicated, secret, and successful maneuvers in military history, Operation Overlord. The survivors are now old men, but two of them told us they will never forget that fateful day. In two coordinated operations, 24,000 airborne troops attacked just after midnight. At 6.30 that morning, Operation Neptune brought 160,000 troops to the shores of Normandy in the largest amphibious assault in history. The famous war correspondent, Ernie Pyle, tried to describe the scene just prior to landing. The best way I can describe this vast armada and the frantic urgency of the traffic is to suggest that you visualize New York City on its busiest day of the year and then just enlarge that scene until it takes in all the ocean the human eye can reach clear around the horizon and over the horizon. There are dozens of times that many. Even with a massive armada, General Eisenhower knew there was no certainty in war. He issued his historic message to the troops prior to their landing. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. That message was delivered, but Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force, kept another message in his pocket, one never used, to be read in case the invasion had failed. It did not fail, but it came with a high price. By the end of the first day, 9,000 men were dead, but over 100,000 were ashore, and millions would soon follow. On D-Day, 18-year-old Private Walter Blum was a combat engineer among the first to land on Omaha Beach. 22-year-old Lieutenant Junior Grade Tracy Sugarman was in command of an amphibious tank and steered his landing vehicle straight for the beach and straight into the enemy's guns. Everybody was uh, seasick as we circled, waiting for our green light to send us into the beach in Normandy. And as we got closer to the beach, you started to hear the noise and see what was happening. And there were boats blown up, and there were bodies in the water, and it was very noisy, and you could smell cordite, and it was chaos. It was just chaos. And with the explosions of the guns firing and the, and the shells exploding on the beach and in the water, it was almost deafening. Some boats um, couldn't make it to the beach, and the soldiers ran off into like eight feet of water and drowned. And many of the personnel were unable to swim, or those that could swim could swim without any equipment on. But when you had 60 pounds of equipment on your back, you were top heavy. And the fellows who were shorter than us walked up and into that water, they just disappeared. The weight of the equipment just took them down. Everybody had to confront the reality that, yeah, you're going to have to fight your way ashore, and then you're going to have to fight your way inland. A lot of fellows got on the beach not with nothing. They lost everything. There was firing going on. There were planes roaring in. There were bombs being dropped behind the beaches. Everything was going to hell, and you were on your own mission making your way through all this. Germans had machine guns up there and mortar shells, and they were bombarding the beach. It was difficult to tell who was shooting at whom. The most vivid sight were these army guys. These were kids that were walking into a, a German army that had been waiting for them. You know, that, that was uh, staggering to me. If anybody asked me, how do you feel? I say, I'm scared. Everybody was scared. I see the beach is not in black and white like a documentary, but almost as a nightmare in a, in a way. You saw people that um, were very alive one minute and very dead the next minute. And then when I went to the cemetery at the top of Omaha Beach, years later, and saw the rows upon rows upon rows upon rows of dead kids who had never started their lives. It made an enormous impression on me. When I look back at it, it was amazing the amount of effort it took to put this together. 
This was so monumental. That war was necessary, and uh, it was absolutely essential that we win it. And we did. Talk about something that changed the course of history. Uh, such brave, brave young men, not yeah. knowing what they were about to face. And, and you hear these firsthand accounts here, uh, the huge obstacles of not only getting to shore, mm -hmm. but then having to fight once you were, were on shore. It was truly the, uh, the greatest generation. Absolutely. And it's, it makes such a difference, too. You can read about it. You can learn about it in school. But until you hear from someone who was there, and until they relive it for you in their words, I mean, the impact is just, it is so much stronger when you do hear it from their mouth. Exactly.